there's this deception out there that I wanted to warn you guys about. And it's the I'm trying deception or the I'm working on it deception. What I mean by that is there's a lot of Christians out there who believe in holiness, who believe that you have to obey Jesus in order to make it to heaven. Some of them even believe that you can lose your salvation. But yet, they're in a sin. And when you confront them and rebuke them about this sin, they say, well, but I'm trying. Or, well, but yes, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. I'm trying harder. Friends, there was this person that was in unforgiveness. And I went to her and I told her, I said, listen, Jesus said that if you don't forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. And she agreed with me. She said, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. That's true. But yet she was in unforgiveness. And so, okay, this, this means that you're going to hell. You're in unforgiveness. You know what that means? And it's, well, well, but I'm trying, but I'm, I'm working on it. You know, it's hard, but I'll get there. I'm working on it. I'm trying. And then there was this guy that I talked to who had a filthy mouth. It was just all the time, just filthiness coming out of his mouth. And I sent him my video that I did. I did a video on cussing and it, and it goes through and it talks about that this comes from a wicked heart that you do not have the Holy Spirit if you have filth just spewing out of your mouth. And to my surprise, he agreed with it and said, I agree with everything you said in that video. Yep, that's true. That's correct. But yet his mouth was filthy. And, and so I said, well, then this means you're going to hell. And, it, and it, well, well, no, I'm trying. I'm working on it. As if he could continue cussing. He could continue with a disgusting mouth. But as long as he was working on it, this was going to appease God in his mind. Like, like for example, instead of cussing maybe eight times a day, you work on it and maybe after several months or years, maybe you're down to cussing just seven times a day. And then, and then maybe after some more work, maybe six times a day. Do you really think that this appeases God's wrath? Do, do you really think that God, God is just patting you on the back and just happy with this? Hey, you know, hey, you're, you're down from cussing eight times a day to four times a day. Wow, that's, that's great work. Do you think that this really makes God happy? But this is the deception. They, they totally agree that people who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. They, they'll say, yep, absolutely. I totally agree with you. You can't do these things. But then they themselves are doing it. And when you confront them, they say, well, yeah, I, I'm doing this, but I'm trying. As if that's going to that's gonna give them a free ticket. As, as if God's going to say, well, oh, you're doing this, but hey, you're trying. But where does this say this? Jesus said, if you don't forgive your brother, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. Does he say, well, unless you're trying to forgive, then, then that's okay, yeah. Or people that are idolaters and sexually immoral and covetous, they won't inherit the kingdom unless they're working on it or, or trying to uh, be a little bit less covetous. And, and the thing is, they never actually get free from their sin. They never actually experience freedom. You'll check back up on them months, years down the road, and they're still trying to overcome their cussing problem, or they're still trying to overcome their unforgiveness. Friends, don't be deceived. This is straight up willful disobedience, and it's cloaked in this I'm trying deception. See, that's what the devil wants. He, he wants to convince you that you're, you're really working towards it, and you're, you're really trying, but you're never actually experiencing freedom from it. Listen. The goal isn't to just sin a little bit less. The goal is to actually stop. You have to actually stop your sin. Jesus told the man at the pool of Bethesda to go and sin no more. He said, no more. He said that nothing worse may happen to you. Do you, do you think he would have turned around and said, well, well, Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep sinning, but maybe, maybe you just meant to sin a little bit less, you know? And, and then maybe, maybe over so many years, maybe I'll be able to stop. Or, or how about the woman caught in adultery? He told her to go and sin no more. What if she would have turned around and just looked at Jesus and said, well, I'm going to continue cheating on my husband. I'm going to continue in adultery. 
But, uh, you know, maybe after so many years, maybe, maybe I'll stop then. Maybe I'll just do it a little bit less. No, he didn't say that. He said, go and sin no more. He didn't tell her to just, to just try to sin a little bit less. This is deception, guys. And, and don't tell me that this is not possible. Don't tell me it's not possible to stop cheating on your spouse. Don't tell me it's not possible to watch your mouth and to stop cussing. Don't tell me it's not possible to stop getting drunk. Okay, unbelievers can do these things. And Peter says that we can actually cease from sin. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2, he says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Do you know what ceased means? It means stopped. It means cut it off. You're done. If your arm caused you to sin, you cut it off. If your eye caused you to sin, pluck it out. You actually do what it takes to actually stop it. Not, not try to stop it. Jesus never said, try to go and sin a little bit less. No, he said, go and sin no more. Peter says that you can cease from sin. Check this out for yourself. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 2. He says, he, for whoever suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. Could you imagine just, could you imagine this in any other relationship? Like, let's say your spouse, and, and let's say you get caught cheating on your spouse, and, and he or she, out of God's mercy, that person takes you back. And, and you say, okay, well, hey, thank you so much for taking me back. And, and, and he or she says, well, so, so where are you going? Well, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going back with my girlfriend. Well, so, so what do you mean? I, I just forgave you. How, how could you say that you're going to go back to your girlfriend? Well, well, honey, see, I'm trying to stop. And, and maybe after, you know, a few months, I might break it off then. I'm trying, you know, what I'm doing is I'm actually trying to cheat on you a little bit less. So instead of seeing her uh, three times a week, I'm going to take it down to, to two times a week. And then, and then maybe down to one time a week. And we'll see, who knows, maybe I'll eventually stop seeing her. Could, could you just imagine? And yet this is what people do with God. They, they say, Say, oh, well, I'm trying. I'm, you know, I'm going to stop maybe sometime. I'm going to be able to. Friends, no, there is, there is victory in Christ. There is freedom in the Holy Spirit. Don't tell me there's not. I actually did a video on, on my struggle with unforgiveness. And I fell under the same delusion, the same deception. And I talk about it in there where God came to me and he said, listen, you need to forgive this person. And I said, uh, I said okay. So I, I knew I had to forgive. I knew what I had to do. But yet a few days later, he comes to me and he says, you need to forgive this person. I said, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Okay, I got, I got it. He comes to me again and says, you need to forgive this person. And I said, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit upset. Like I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to forgive this person. I, I'm trying. And he told me, he's like, no, you actually need to stop. You need to stop talking bad about this person. You need to start blessing this person. You actually need to repent. You need to stop it. Cut it off for good. End it. End your sin. Stop it. And this just, this blew me away because I was under this deception that I could keep on doing it as long as I, as long as I was kind of fooling myself into, into thinking that I was trying and maybe, you know, doing a little bit better. But no, again, Jesus says, go and sin no more. And listen, James 2.22 says that, Faith is not completed. It's not made whole. It's not completed until you attach a work to it. And this is the deception of faith alone. Because I believed, I, I knew that I had to stop my sin. I knew that I had to stop my unforgiveness. And just like when I talk to people, I confront them about their sin and they say, yep, I, I agree that's a sin. I agree that leads to hell. Totally agree with that. But then you say, okay, well, then why are you still doing it? Well, well, you know, I'm still trying. I'm working on it. See, they haven't made their faith complete. James 2.22 says, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. You see, it's not enough to just believe that you need to do the right thing. It's not enough to just believe that you need to stop it. No, your faith is not made complete until you actually do it. 
until you actually stop your sin. If, if you're cheating on your spouse, you can believe all you want that you shouldn't be doing it. And you can even feel bad about it. And you could even know that you need to stop doing it. But until you actually attach a work to it and stop going over to that person's house and cheating on your spouse, then that's not faith. That faith has not been made complete. You can believe it all you want, but until you do it, it's not faith. It's not going to benefit you. And listen, don't, don't tell me this isn't possible. Just like the saying goes, where there's a will, there's a way. The reason you're not stopping your sin is because you simply don't want to. You don't have the will. And, and listen, you can say that you do. You can say that you want to. But the proof is in you actually, you continuing in your sin. That's the proof that you genuinely don't want to stop it. It's the same thing if you're cheating on your spouse. If you're still cheating on your spouse, you can cry all you want and say, oh, I don't want to be doing this and I feel bad. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you, you try to convince yourself of that, but you don't. If you truly felt bad, if you truly wanted to stop it, well, guess what? You would stop it. And it's the same way with God. If you truly feel bad about it, if you truly know that you're, you're supposed to stop it, then you would actually make your faith complete, step out and take an action to actually make it stop. And in that way, your faith is complete. Listen, in Revelation 2.11, Jesus says that it's only to those who conquer, the conquerors, that will not be hurt by the second death. This means that they will not go to hell. Only those who conquer, who conquer their sin, who have victory over their sin. Listen, through the Holy Spirit, we have victory. We have victory over our sin. We overcome the world. Look, in 1 John 5.4, it says that our faith, is the kind of faith that overcomes the world. It overcomes sin. It says, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. But again, just like it says in James 2.22, that faith has to be completed, just like it was for Abraham, it has to be completed by a work. You have to do something to make your faith complete. Like in the example of cheating on your spouse, you have to actually stop. Not, not just try. No, no. God, God's not looking for people to, to try to obey him. No, he's looking for people who are going to actually conquer by the power of the Holy Spirit. Who are, Conquer means have victory, means that you're over, you've defeated your sin. It doesn't mean that you're you're trying to, to conquer. See, notice, notice how in Revelation 2.11, it doesn't say to the one who tries to conquer will not be hurt by the second death. No. See, there's no mention of trying here. It says to the one who conquers, you know, the one who actually conquers, who rules over his sin, will not be hurt by the second death. You know, a lot of people love to quote Paul. But yet Paul agrees with Jesus that you have to actually stop your sin. You have to put an end to it. Cut it off. No more. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. He says, wake up from your drunken stupor as is right and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. For those of you out there that think that you can just continue in sin and, and you can hide behind this cloak of, Oh, well, I'm trying and I'm trying to get a little bit better and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sinning a little bit less. Well, listen, listen, this, this is for you. Paul says, wake up from your drunken stupor. You're intoxicated by your sin. You love your sin. That's why you're not giving it up. That's deep down. You love it. You don't want to give it up. He says, wake up from your drunken stupor as is right. Do not go on sinning. Well, but Paul, I mean, you know, hey, I'm, I'm trying not to go on sinning, but, you know, we're all going to continue in sin. No, he says, do not go on sinning. Take this up with Paul. If you have an issue with this, take this up with Paul. Check this out for yourselves. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. He says, do not go on sinning. Just like Jesus told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. And listen to this. He says, for some have no knowledge of God. If, if you think that you can just continue in your sin and just say that you're trying to do it a little bit less, you have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. You should be ashamed. That's what it says here. Guys, don't, don't be deceived by this. 
you have to actually cease from sin like Peter said. Like James said, you have to actually do something to make your faith complete. Like Paul said, you have to not go on sinning. Wake up from your drunken stupor. Guys, don't be deceived by this. That's all I got. God bless.